evening, everyone. Okay, I heard funny noises. I like the news this Thursday. Traffic accident. I think this didn't work. Good morning and welcome back. Today is April 1st. It's 7 o'clock in the morning and it's our last day in Miami. With our, I mean myself and my sunburn. Today I'm gonna go to Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, which is located on Merritt Island, a little bit east of Orlando. It's a stretch of land which is 50 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide. All manned space flights of the United States of America between 1968 and 2011 have been launched from Cape Canaveral. I'm gonna watch SpaceX Falcon 9 take off tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Um, our time here. And I'm really excited and absolutely thrilled about it. It's uh, one of my big childhood dreams to see a rocket launch. Yeah! There it is! And I'm really thrilled. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Um, I'm really thrilled to, to see the, um, the launch complex there, uh, Kennedy Space Center, the, the whole building structures and also the launch sites um, with their amazing facilities. I'm really looking forward to it. A quick check of the hotel room and off we go. Okay, I think that's it. We can go now. Gracias. Launch procedure checklist. Hydration system. Checked. Nutritional system, beef jerky. Kennedy Space Center, admission, visual enhancement system. It's up and running. Head protection system. On. Checklist complete. Houston, this is Silverado. We are ready for launch. Houston, Silverado, all systems go for launch. Copy that. Time for some beef jerky now. I love it. Tastes a little bit like a shoe sole, but if you get used to it, it's really something typical American. I remember when we had that um, back in the 80s. We bought it on the roadside from uh, from some Indians. This here is not so good as I remember it from them. Probably because it has more artificial stuff in it than, I don't know, a car tire. What's this? probably to keep it dry or moist and it says do not eat really so let's grab some healthy american fast food Sorry? are you making a movie i'm making a movie on um, cape canaveral today did you hear about that um probably but the the first i, I heard his name thank you have a good day have Easter. Bye. Bye. Oops, sorry. Open, open. hi how are you i'm good fine thank you this happy easter exciting. thank you you too Nice shirt. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And 11, 12, 13, and a dime. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. So what I think is really interesting with American highways, on the one side you have uh, parts of exploded tires lying around everywhere. And on the other hand, you have signs that are saying you can sponsor the highways. And um, most of the times it seems to be as um, there are universities sponsoring the highways. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the connection is here. Yeah, that's a V8 sound. People in Florida are driving relatively fast, at least 75 or 80. Of course, I'm gonna stick to 70. Don't wanna get fined. I'm gonna shop online. Now, of course, in our day, we've split the atom, but that is the most indivisible particle. Paul is saying it's going to take place so quickly that no matter how we call and measure time, it is going to be in an indivisible second. And to make his point, 
He says a twinkling of the eye. Now you just, wherever you may be listening at this point, uh, just uh, twinkle your eyes. Come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Indeed, a powerful enemy, isn't it? Because this enemy stalks us. It follows us. And when our heart begins to hurt and we have some chest pain, we run to the doctor because we're fearing we might have a heart attack. I really hate to say it, but I'm running late again. 12.36. Highways are air patrolled for speed violations. So there ain't no sneaky, tricky speeding like in Austria. Here I come! Entering NASA Causeway uh, onto Merritt Island with only minutes to spare. So here I am finally, Kennedy Space Center, Cape Canaveral. Yeah! I'm totally guys, late. All our tours are, are, are sold out for the day. Okay. I'm too late. I need to go to the. Um, they can always get one more on, so I'm gonna okay. just tell them, Super. put you on the two o'clock. Yeah, okay? that's cool. When is it good to, to be here for, for the launch to really get a good seat? Um, if you're watching from here, anytime, there's no specific time. Uh -huh. If you wanna go out to the Saturn V building, um, which is close, six miles closer. But the difference between here and Saturn V is it's right across the water. Yeah. And it's still possible to get in there? Yeah, it's so first come, first serve though. Awesome, so, really? Um, yeah, but the, yeah. once wow. it hits 4,000 people, then no one else can go out there. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Okay, um, today I'm gonna take the tour probably at uh, two o'clock. I just found out that it's possible to be even closer to the rocket. There should be another possibility only a couple of miles away with a direct line of sight. And I'm gonna be here early, my speciality. And, uh, but I'm not gonna miss it this time, not this time. Or how NASA says, failure is not an option. Oh yeah, I'm getting goosebumps again. But now let's focus on the KC tour. You said the uh, little um, escape uh, rocket has a million pounds of thrust. Uh, roughly, right? roughly, not. But it's, not... is it is it like comparable to the large rockets? Comparable. I mean, they're solid think, fuels. Yeah. You know, they're they're a different configuration of you know fuels, but because yeah. they're much smaller. What what is uh, do you know what um, Falcon 9 has? Falcon 9 thrust. Yeah. yeah. A little over a million. Okay. Wow. Well. Million two. So it's, so it's really small and really powerful. Really small and really powerful to do one thing. Yeah. One thing only. Pull the get, capsule get, very fast. Get the heck out. And it will. You'll. It goes from zero to five hundred in about three seconds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a lot of G's. Yeah. And it, more or less, you'd be unconscious. But probably. Yeah. But when you wake up, you'll be okay. It's good again. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's so right. Thanks. That's right. Oh, you're welcome. What's the bunker for? Oh boy, is that a huge building and absolutely legendary. All the uh, Apollo missions and also the space shuttles have been assembled here. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. This is an absolute dream come true. Seeing a real Saturn V rocket. Wow. 
heard and uh, seen and read so much about that. That's really cool. I have to pop on the wide angle lens in order to have any chance of getting that on. Oh, absolutely amazing. not a model or anything but it never flew but it's an actual thing and uh, I think the whole Apollo program is something really really special it shows what humankind or mankind can achieve if people work together over two million separate systems had to work perfectly in unison in order to get that thing working isn't that an accomplishment okay I'm gonna give you a a rundown of the Saturn V and I'm gonna try to tell you everything that I know and uh, I hope it's more or less correct. So um, the Saturn V boosters, they have five of them and um, they ran cool fuel through um, these fairings here in order to cool them um, because it was so so hot and so powerful that they had problems with uh, the fairings melting. So um, they had um, cool fuel injected through all those pipes and uh, it heated up of course, went back, uh, went through the turbo pumps and then got, um, uh, got ignited and then uh, came out and produced thrust. There is um, one turbo pump for all of the five uh, engines and the turbo pumps, they uh, propel the jet fuel into the combustion chamber and um, they have uh, forces of up to 25,000 horsepower only to propel the propellant um, so quite quite astonishing um, if you think of it you have 125,000 horsepower just to get the gasoline flowing um, so next up thing that I'm noticing is um, the black and white coloring um, as far as I know it's um, it's there to to um, make it easier to tell whether the rocket is turning or not um, so they had these black and white uh, patches here. So what you see now is the first stage, which is mainly huh, a huge gigantic fuel t tank to, to get off um, and uh, to, to begin the ascent. So there's uh, the beginning of the second stage. You can see also five uh, little bit smaller rocket engines, probably working pretty much the same. Um, just with uh, less, less rust because of course um, everything down there will be gone when these guys here fire and so the rocket is uh, much much less heavy so you don't need so much power again. Uh, I could figure that um, those ribs that you're seeing here and here that they have some kind of, of stiffness or stability function but I'm also not quite sure about that third stage coming up with a single engine gosh this thing is long right so this piece here they have cut it out and placed it on the ground for us to see and that's the brain so they had all the gimbals and um, all the intelligence uh, the guidance systems the computers they had it in, in this ring so um, that was pretty much the control unit of the rocket itself so where, where all the internal guidance happened yeah and then uh, then there is the, the really important part the service module and the command module right here lunar missions are um, steered and commanded um, by the pilots and, and by the crew from, from this module here and the service module carries um, yeah, equipment and uh, has just much more power. And here in that fairing is um, this little baby here, um, the lunar module. And what happens is a quite complex maneuver. So these, um, these two babes are together and they 
fly forward and pull out the lunar module then this thing turns around and attaches to the lunar module and so they built um, like uh, yeah they, they reconstruct like a transformer um, the space spacecraft and um, this thing then flies to the moon uh, that's also very important the little thing here um, it's a very powerful rocket and it's uh, there to, to evacuate the crew should anything go wrong in the first uh, stage of the launch. It um, detached them and, and um, it then flies away. And uh, everything you see here, these, basically these three components, they need all this massive thing to get it to the moon. This moon rock was collected by astronaut Jack Smith near the Apollo 17 lunar module landing site. The rock weighs approximately 17 grams and is a fragment of a much larger original sample. The rock is known as Mare Basalt, a porous rock produced from cooled lava. Formed approximately 3.7 billion years ago, it is older than 99.99% of all surface rocks on Earth. Scientists continue to study the Apollo program lunar samples today at NASA's John Space Center and other research institutions around the world. Oh, well, okay, yeah, I read it off. And I'm gonna touch it. You wanna touch the moon? I just touched the moon. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have the positive apprehension before tomorrow's start is almost unbearable at least on my side so if you liked it subscribe like and share see you next time okay heard funny noises I hope this works really I have a problem, if not. I think this didn't work. No, didn't work. Okay, this is what happened. I called the road, roadside assistance and they said um, I could either get somebody to, uh, to help me and to change and fix the tire, which uh, is gonna take somewhere in between half an hour and three hours and it costs me 70 bucks and I said no thanks I'm gonna change the tire by myself Do you know what I really like on the internet and social media? A video how to change a tire on the Silverado 2018 I think I would have given up quite soon so this is really cool <laughs> That's a bad guy. Why are there so many punctures in the US? Didn't we talk about that today? Back on the road again. What a fantastic day. But I need to go to bed now. Mm-hmm.